Poison types have always been in a very awkward position as a result of their very good defensive profile and ability to hit fairy types with a very otherwise weak offensive profile, having four resists and immunity. And is very often associated with evil teams due to their prevalence of using a lot of them, such as Coughing, Trubbish, and Golbat, among others. But what really sets them apart in the grand scheme of things is Toxic Spikes. It's a non-damaging move introduced in Generation 4, but the important part about it is that it means that any Pokemon that switches in that is not a Poison Steel, or non-grounded, as in Levitate or Flying type, will become poisoned on switch in. If you have two layers, they'll become badly poisoned. And Poison types have the very special distinction of absorbing this hazard as opposed to letting it go. And this makes it very valuable overall. When it comes to Scarlet Violet Little Cup, the viability rankings have very good poison types such as Glimit and Marion E in a, plus t a minus tier. They have Fungus in B tier. And then in B minus tier, we have Shrewdel and Stunky. So that begs the question, how good are all of these poison types? And do Toxic Spikes really matter all that much in the grand scheme of things? So if we go to Trash in the Gang here of all of our poison types, we have Glimit, Marion E, Fungus, and Stunky. Larvus is here for a reason. Don't worry. So... We have Glimit, and that's probably the best one, I would say, because of the new ability that was added, which is Toxic Debris. If this Pokemon is hit by a physical attack, Toxic Spikes are set on the opposing side. For an example, an attack that we would really like to take is either Larvesta Stabs in Flare Blitz or U-Turn. Flare Blitz being a 120 base power fire type move, and U-Turn being a 70 base power bug type move. Both of which, Glimit can take really comfortably, and then set up Toxic Spikes as a result. Now, obviously, it's not ideal that Larvesta can just U-turn into, into your opponent's own poison type, but the point is, is that it it makes your opponent have to dance around your strategies really hard. Larvesta might want to really U-turn into Giraffe Rig, so that way after Glimit is chipped down a bit, it can be threatened out by a Psychic type, but that would mean that you have to get Toxic Damage onto your Giraffe Rig, which can be really hard to deal with. It's got a really good defensive profile because of its Rock Poison type. Eviolite makes it pretty bulky. And then it's got a 105 base special attack, which is frankly absurd. Absurd in the best way possible. This is better than some fully evolved Pokemon. It's really good. You've also got a pretty good speed stat of 16. That means that you're not going to be too, too slow, but you're not going to be too, too fast either. It's pretty nice. You also have a whole bunch of other options. You have Stealth Rock. You have Sludge Bomb, Power Gem is good stab. You have Mud Shot if you're worried about the mirror or if you don't want Setup Sweeper setting up on you. But you also have stuff like Dazzling Gleam so that way you can hit fighting types. You have... You can do a sweeping set with Rock Polish. You have Spikes so that way you can set up more hazards and be really good team support. But it's all really in how you want to play the Glimit. It's really it's really flexible and that's pretty cool. Next up we have Marion E. Otherwise known as Minipex, Toxipex is one of the most annoying Pokemon in Overuse due to Regenerator, Poison Water typing that's really hard to break over, as well as a whole bunch of support moves such as Toxic Spikes, Baneful Bunker, Haze, a whole bunch of stuff. And Minipex is really useful because of its really good defensive typing, as well as really good stats. It has 50 HP, 62 defense, and 52 special defense. Which is about average, but combined with Regenerator makes it absurdly bulky. It's really nice. Excuse me. You also have really good move pool. If you want to, you can run Chilling Water. I don't recommend it, but you can. Uh, but you also have Ice Coverage, so that way you can beat over some ground types that would otherwise threaten your Poison Typing, which is really nice. You have Surf, is a pretty nice stab. Sludge Bomb, even though you may not want to set Toxic Spikes always, being able to poison your opponent with a nice move, like Sludge Bomb, 90 base power. It can do a lot of damage, especially with the poison. That's always really nice. You can run Iron Defense. That can be really hard to deal with because you just wall your opponent's physical po Pokemon really, really well as a result. Uh, but you can run Physical or Special, actually. Instead of running Surf, you can run Liquidation. If you don't want to run Sludge Bomb, you can run Poison Jab. And I mean, to be fair, Marini has a higher attack stat, so you can run that if you want to. Uh, but you have a lot of options with this. You can also run Toxic to be cheeky, so that way something trying to set up on it, because Marini is very passive. You can run Toxic, so that way they're not just free setup. So that'd be pretty nice. But you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to running Marini, and it's really nice. Next up we have Fungus. It doesn't actually set Toxic Spikes, unlike 
Glimit, Marionee, and Stunky, which can all set them. Fungus just absorbs them, and that could be really nice. But its main draw is the ability to use Spore, which causes the target to fall asleep, which is absurdly valuable. Being able to get one to three free turns off of your opponent just by clicking one move is fantastic value. You also can take attacks really well because although you're not as bulky as mini packs, you still have a good 69 HP, 45 defense, and 55 special defense, which is always really nice to have. You can regenerate it off, you can use synthesis to keep yourself healthy, or you can attack into your opponent with Giga Drain in order to keep yourself healthy that way. And then you also have Sludge Bomb, it's pretty nice. The unfortunate part about Fungus is that it doesn't really have a very deep move pool. Like, it's mainly just grass and poison coverage, and there's not really all that much there. Stun Spore is an option, but I feel like it, it just the, the The four moves that you really want are always this. It's been consistent ever since last generation, or probably even before that, honestly. Just because of how much value you get out of Dual Stab and Grass and Poison. Spore support and the synthesis to keep yourself healthy. There's just way too much there. Next up we have Stunky. It's, it's important just because it's another T-Spike setter. And out of all of these, it has a niche because it's not weak to Giraffe Rig, which is the tier king. Because on the Nasty Plot set, it really often wants to run Twin Beam and then Terra Blast Fighting. So Stunky carves out a little bit of a niche due to being able to threaten Giraffe Rig with Stab Dark-type moves before Terra being able to blank psychic type moves that would otherwise really annoy all three of Glimit, Minipex, and Fungus, as well as being still pretty offensive due to its 18 speed stat. The The big issue is that you're not very bulky comparatively. Even with Eviolite, stuff like Glimit's going to be bulkier because of its better typing defensively. Now, Dark Poison isn't bad, and we've seen it really well on stuff like Alolan Muck, but it's just not very useful for this tier is the issue. But even then, like, well, Marion E has better defense, better special defense, has Regenerator, so that way it's more defensive. And can stay healthy for longer. Same with Fungus. And then when it comes to the ability on Stunky, you have Aftermath. It's not bad, but it's comparatively exceedingly lackluster compared to stuff like Regenerator or Toxic Debris. So there's that. But what exactly do you want to be hitting with Toxic Spikes? Because that's a really big question. Because, I mean, like... Toxic Spikes are good, but they're not essential, so what exactly do you want to be hitting with it? Well, you have quite a few. Uh, Giraffe Rig being poisoned really limits its capabilities throughout the course of the game because it can't just keep on doing whatever and not take any amount of damage. It's really easy for it to just keep on trucking with this 70 HP, 65 defense, and 65 special defensive stats. These are all exceedingly good. So being able to get even like a slight amount of chip damage is really nice. I mean, besides Paralysis, Giraffe Rig doesn't really have good status conditions you want to put it under. Honestly, Poison is probably the third best. First one being Sleep, because the only time that you can actually sleep Giraffe Rig is Toad School. It likes running Spore. And then you have Mycelium Might to ignore abilities, and the reason why that's important is that this has Sap Zipper, so it has a Grass Immunity. So normally you wouldn't be able to Spore it. So being able to poison it instead, put it on a timer, mean, means that you can at least limit it in some fashion. It can be really hard for Giraffe Rig to recover afterwards. Like, for example, on this set, there is no longevity, there is no wish, there is no rest. So as a result, Giraffe Rig is set on a very strict timer that it can't escape very easily. Not without a whole bunch of team support. On the physical attacker set, because there's multiple sets, hooray! Uh, you know, Psychic Fangs are a quick crunch body slam. You would prefer a burn on this, but having Toxic Spice damage so that way it's constantly worn down is always really nice. And then Screen Setter doesn't really care about it all that much because it's supposed to be elite anyway. But the point is, if you get a wear down the Tier King so that way you don't have to deal with it anymore, or at least not have to put in as many resources when you already want to be setting up T Spikes anyway naturally, it's always really nice. Funnily enough, the spinners don't like having it either. Despite the fact that their express purpose is to come in, use rapid spin to free hazards such as toxic spikes, and then get out, they don't really like being poisoned. Quaxley can kind of deal with it due to the fact that it has roost, so it can heal back 50% of its HP. So that's all a-okay. It's more of a hit. It's more of an annoyance as opposed to a really game-breaking thing. But Toad School, the other best rapid spinner in the tier, 
really hates it as a result of if it wants to have reliable recovery, it has to use Giga Drain. And Giga Drain is really, really inconsistent because, as mentioned before, Giraffe Freak has Sap Zipper, so you don't want to be throwing off grass that moves very often. Even though it's some alright recovery, being able to wear this down over the course of the game is really, really valuable. Next up, we have a special mention in Deerling, and the reason why it's a special mention is because what Deerling does is that it uses Thunder Wave to paralyze you, then uses Headbutt to make you flinch, and it has Serene Grace, which doubles the secondary effect chances, meaning that you have a really hard time breaking through this and actually attacking. And then it can just Thunder Wave you, Headbutt you, and then you just get flinched down to Oblivion. But it has a significantly harder time doing that if it's poisoned and on a timer because it needs to keep itself healthy and the very off chance that you actually break through and attack it. As a result, having T-Spikes up versus Deerling is exceedingly important. Next up, the entire archetype of Rain really hates seeing them. Now, they can run Shrudel as a Rain Setter to absorb Toxic Spikes seeing as Shrudel is a Poison type. But the main issue is it's a very hyper-offensive based archetype. It's not meant to take a bunch of hits. It's meant to deal a bunch of them and not have to deal with the consequences. So having poison, having any of their mons poisoned is going to put them back quite a bit because then they have to play really awkwardly around. For example, on Weasel, Wave Crash Recoil, or how many times they've just been in, it can be really awkward for them to play around. Then the final one that I have to mention is Setup Sweepers. For example, Crib Brawler with Bulk Up, because nothing really hurts your chances at setting up and sweeping a team quite like being on a timer. Being reduced by like, I think it's 12% of HP per turn can really, really make it so that way your sweeper is much worse. For example, Giraffe Rig with Nasty Plot, it doesn't have recovery, and being able to put it on a timer, have it only have 10 turns in addition to hitting it down with some priority moves, having a choice scarf, or forcing it out, all this sorts of stuff can make it really limited, and that's always really nice. For Brawler, it gets a bit of a special mention because if we go to viability rankings again, it moved up to A- here because it's a fighting type that's not walled by any of these poison, and that can be really dangerous for you. But just as an example, you have Ice Punch for Fungus, you have Thunder Punch for Marion E, but then you can also run stuff like uh, Crab Hammer, so that way you can beat over fighting type fire types, I should say, as well as Glimmet, but then you also have Earthquake. Stuff like that. You have a lot of options here, but you often want to run bulk up, which is really nice. But that's a whole bunch of stuff that you want to hit with Toxic Spikes. And if we go to the viability rankings, Giraffe Rig is S tier, Toad School A plus tier, we have Quaxley in A, we have Deerling in A minus. These are some pretty high value targets that you want to be hitting with Toxic Spikes. This isn't just some random stuff. It's just like, oh, you know, it's like B minus ranks and B ranks. No, 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 this is the, this is the big stuff. You want to be, be hitting a whole bunch of this stuff. And for good reason, it's going to be on a lot of teams. But then the issue is, what about the, the T-Spikes Immunes? We have Pawnyard, which is, if we go back to the viability rankings, A plus tier, or we're going to get to Magnemite and Ghastly in a sec, they're both A tier, but Pawnyard's immune to it as a result of its steel typing. Magnemite is also immune to it, and it really wants to switch in often as a result of basically being a Trace Scarf user and nothing else, so that can be really awkward. Tinker Tank's worth a mention because it's also a steel type that has a niche, but it has recently fallen to B tier. It's it's something to keep in mind, but you're probably not going to see Tinker Tank very much. But then, as I mentioned before, you have the Levitate Pokemon such as Ghastly. Ghastly is a bit of a pickle here because what removes Toxic Spikes are grounded poisons. Ghastly cannot do it because it doesn't touch the Toxic Spikes, so even though it's a poison type, it can't remove T-Spikes. It's immune to them, but you would kind of wish that it would at least take them with them. Take those Toxic Spikes away to the afterlife. But it can't do that. Drifloon, I keep on finding it that it's, it's getting significantly better just because of Unburden. But it's immune to it because it's a flying type and it can be really annoying because if you have Toxic Spikes set up on your opponent's side of the field, you can do a lot of substitute shenanigans, acrobatics to wear down your opponent. And then if you need to, you can Destiny Bond to knock something out, which is pretty nice. Also, Watrill gets a special mention for being the, the new bird that was introduced this generation. But, with that being said, it's only alright. So, we have Drifloon in B tier, right here. And then we have Watrill in B minus. It's just something to keep in mind that all of these are immune to it. And although there are some very low value targets such as Watrill, Drifloon, 
You also have a lot of high ones up there. Pontiard, Magnemite, Ghastly. Gotta keep those in mind. But then there's also the Mons that just don't really care all that much about it. So, for example, Mudbray, it doesn't care too much because it, it's meant to take hits anyway. It has a Rest Talk set. Rest always supersedes any status that you have, so even if it's at 1 one HP and it's poisoned, as long as it gets that rest off, it's not going to die, and that can be really annoying. But also, it's meant to stay around a long time anyway, and poisoning it doesn't... It doesn't really impact it too much, because it's supposed to stay on the field, take a whole bunch of hits, raise its defense because of stamina, and then sweep the opponent's team. So there's that. Next up, we have Dark Souls. So, when you're playing Dark Souls as Nimble, it doesn't really care too too much about the poison. It'd be much more annoyed by stealth rocks because it's just a straight 25%. And very often, Nimble doesn't stay in all that often anyway. And that's the same with the choice reference I'll get to. But very often, all you really want to do is like click first impression and click U-turn. You don't really want to stay for a while. So it's hard to get progress on revenge killers like the choice scarfers and Nimble. You can also put me out on this list, actually. It's sort of Nimble light because it's fake out. U-turn assurance. It's just it, it kill, revenge kills via priority as opposed to speed. But Nimble's the better one as a result of first impression being a bug type move. Plus you have tinted lens and U-turn. All stab. It, it's it's always really valuable. But the point is they don't really stay in all that much. So even if you want to like oh I can protect against revenge killers, well no, not really because they don't really stay in all that often. They don't like losing HP, but it's manageable. And then finally, Choice Scarfers. Now, obviously, there's, you have Choice Scarf Magnemite and Choice Scarf Pontiard, but the other ones, such as Mankey, such as Zorwa, they don't care about it all that much because they're not staying in all that often anyway. Unless they're cleaning a team at the very end of the game, at which point you can probably plan around it, but it's not going to really affect their game plan all that much if they get one-tenth of their HP stripped, like once every two to three turns, I guess. It's it's not all that impactful, because very often what they want to do is that they want to come in, revenge kill something, and then switch out immediately afterwards. And even then, they have U-turn on a lot of these, so on both Mankey and Zorua, they both have U-turn. So even if they take the poison damage, they can just U-turn out, take no damage, and it's essentially like there's nothing there. And that also means that they can't get status for the rest of the game because they have poison already, so they can't be... Thunder Wave, they can't be burned, which can always be really valuable because it allows you to play really risky sometimes. So, as I mentioned before with Deerling, it wants to set up Paraflinch with Thunder Wave as well as Headbutt. But having Toxic Spikes on Mankey have be poisoned means that it can really comfortably come in on a Thunder Wave and then also threaten with a close combat immediately afterwards. So that can be really awkward for you. It's just something to keep in mind, but Toxic Spikes can really dominate a game. But the last important thing when mentioning hazards is the spin blockers. Ghastly and Drifloon, as mentioned before. Ghastly has a whole bunch of sets, Drifloon still has a whole bunch of sets. But the important part is they block Rapid Spin, and that's what's important. Grievard is surprisingly really good. So for context, if we go to the resource... It's currently in B tier. Before, it was, I think, in D tier, even. It was really, really bad. But then people realized, wait, it's got the ability Fluffy. So you take half damage from contact moves. And most of the people that want to Rapid Spin are physical attackers. So I might as well. And it's just a really, really good answer. If you want to keep your hazards up, just run Grievard. It's surprisingly good. And I'll show why in a second, because it can even take on the Tear King Giraffe Rig if it's running a physical set, which is absurd. With that being said, it, it's just a really good spin blocker, and it can really benefit because it wants to stay in a lot, and you can run rest on the usual set, just stall out a whole bunch of turns, be really annoying, it's really nice. Sandy Ghast? It's also in B tier, and it's just kind of funny because very often it was just clowned on because of its ability... Water Compaction being kind of useless because it has to take a Water-type move in order for it to happen. But then you also remember, Quaxley is a Water-type, so you pair up surprisingly well if you're healthy enough. So you just take the Liquidation, get a sharp defense increase, and then Quaxley can't kill you. And it's so dumb that somehow a Ground-type can win versus a Water-type. It's great. But it's also a really good spin blocker because it just 
takes the attack so well because of its, frankly, absurd defensive stats. 80 defense plus 55 HP is always really nice. Uh, back to Griefer for a sec. It's got 60 and 50, but Fluffy really helps it out there. But what Sandy Guest has that Griefer doesn't is that it has the move Shore Up, which restores half of your max HP, which could be really useful when... Uh, the, all the other spin blockers don't really have this reliable recovery. If we go back to Ghastly, it's very frail. It's got 30 HP, 30 defense. It's not going to be taking hits. Drifloon, very often you want to run Ornberry Unburden. It's not really meant to take a whole bunch of hits. It's meant to come in, consume Ornberry, and then be faster than everything and get a whole bunch of support moves off. But Sandy Gas stands out between all of them because it actually is shore up. And that can be really useful for keeping your T-Spikes up, as well as wasting turns. If Quaxley comes in, tries to Rapid Spin, and then you have a Sandy Gas in the back and you send in the Sandy Gas, not only will the Rapid Spin be blocked, Quaxley then takes a turn's worth of poison damage, which can be really useful in wearing it down over the course of the game. It also has to take entry hazards, so if it has rock if you have rocks up, spikes up, it can really rack up very quickly. Also, final thing worth a mention. Terra Ghost Pokemon that normally aren't Ghost. I'm having Ponyard here because it likes running it because it, otherwise it's weak to fighting type moves. But you can also run like a whole bunch of mods with just Ghost type. And it's very funny. But being able to block Rapid Spin and keep the Toxic Spikes up, especially for a lot of what we mentioned before, T-Spikes targets, like being able to force Quaxly in, have it Rapid Spin and waste a turn, having to force Toad School in, have it waste a turn, is just really, really valuable, especially when they have to take entry hazards, and then your opponent's on the back foot again, they have to switch out, figure out something else that they want to do. It can be really annoying. And then, of course, let's see this in practice. So this is Elfuzion versus MK007. This is the finals of Little Cup Kickoff. So, actually, let me just analyze the... So let me reset this real quick. So, Elfu has a hazard stacking team because you have Grievart plus Glimmit. It's a really good combination, because it's really hard to rapid spin away the poison when you have Grievar, which is so absurdly bulky. Plus, you have a hazard setter that's really reliable and glimmer that can set them even without even trying. Uh, but, uh, let's see here. Yep, <laughs> let's just set, let's mention this. Uh, Grievar can come in versus Giraffe Rig and threaten it out. That's how good it is. You can also run Yawn instead of using Rest. Which could be really nice. But then Rain Dance, Mud Shot. And then we're gonna see the magic happen here of Glimmer's gonna set up Toxic Spikes without even trying, which can be really annoying because if we just look at the team structure from MK007 right now, the only spinner is Toad School at 15% HP. So those Toxic Spikes are never going away, which is really valuable against Giraffe Rig. It can be really valuable against Mud Raven, it doesn't care too much, but just being able to wear down the enemy's team passively without even having to do anything, as well as just doing what you want to do normally, which as uh, we know that this is physical giraffe rig. So what do you want to bring in? You want to bring in your physically defensive Grievard. So, uh, we can just skip ahead a few turns. Grievard only takes 40... Oh, my... I'm sorry, I just realized that Grievard managed to take... A 120 base power stab Terra Water in the rain wave crash. It didn't even take 50%. Oh my lord. Oh! <laughs> what, what the dog doing? It was stuck to him. And then also you have Shadow Sneak for good utility. And then Giraffe Rig comes in because he's like, oh, well, I need something in order to break over this Grievard because Toad Skull can't really do it because it just dies to Shadow Sneak. Surskit's currently asleep. And Mudfray is going to die to Ice Fangs, as well as get Yawn to death. Well, no, you can't get Yawn, but... 22! 22 from Giraffe Rig. Let's go back to stats of Giraffe Rig real quick. It's got... Well, physical, physical attacker, but... It's got... What is, what, is, what is it doing then? Yeah, okay. It's got 17 attack at level 5. It's got a base 80 attack stat. And it only did 20% to Griever. What is this mon? And then you're still doing good damage back, and you can't. And MK007 is really, really limited here because you can't really go Toad School to get rid of the poison, so that means Giraffe Rig is really easily dealt with by Griever. It's crazy. And then as a result of the passive damage, Diglett can just win the game. And you're going to see here that Mudbreak comes in because that's the obvious choice. I mean, Cersei gets to sleep, Toad School's not going to be able to deal with it, so you got to go to Mudbreak. 
And as I mentioned before, Mudbird doesn't really care about it. But the issue is... It kind of has to when your Diglett has Substitute and has to take Poison Damage every single turn. So otherwise, that'd be really reductive play from Elfu. Because why would you just substitute with Diglett? I mean, it doesn't really get you any progress, you're not doing any damage to Mudbray, so what's the point? But the point is, with, with Poison Up, even though you're being passive, you can still do a lot of damage to your opponent, and that's why Poison Types are so valuable. And even you see on the MK007 structure, there is no grounded poison to absorb the Toxic Spikes. As a result, Giraffery gets worn down significantly quicker, Mudbray is getting worn down right now, and it can, it's just so hard for MK007 to really answer all of this passive damage around. Yep, even just says, yep, GG will play it. And then that's it, that's the end of it. Because then Giraffery just wins, and that's it. And that's how important T Spikes can be. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could like, share, and subscribe, that would be great. And as always, have a good day.